each time there is a, a violent crime that generates emotional ripples in society, those people come with an even more hardcore security law, bringing more power and more resources to the spying agencies and other police forces, and less accountability. How would you define the term, the illusion of security? This security argument is the counterpoint of the, the argument of, uh, of fear, is the, the, the abuse of fear. Anyone you present that will be in the name of security to fight terrorism would be made acceptable. Because security is good, right? Everybody likes security. So if I tell you, give me your keys, give me your phone number, give me your, your PIN code, give me everything, and you'll get security. If you don't know anything about security, you may think, oh yeah, please, yeah, thank you, go, take my stuff. So this illusion of security is what, um, what happens when we have uh, political uh, manipulation, when, when lies are used to uh, enforce unjust powers on us. And this is a global trend. Uh, it, we think, of course, of the US and the Patriot Act, you know, in the name of security. Everybody's communication should be listened all the time. The NSA should be completely unaccountable. Uh, their budget should skyrocket. The same is happening in the UK with this pile of anti-terror law. The same happens in France. To say, oh, you don't need to try and understand the people who did something wrong. Because if you start to understand, you start to excuse. So we don't need to understand what leads to violent attacks. But by the way, you just need to believe us in whatever we do when we say we will counter the next attacks. And actually it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because each time there is a, a violent crime that generates emotional ripples in society, those people come with an even more hardcore security law, bringing more power and more resources to the spying agencies and other police forces and less accountability. But when they fail, next time there is another attack, they say, see, it means we still need more budget and less, and, and less accountability. So it's, it's a spiral. The more they will fail, the more they will need new legislation, the more they will have resources, the less accountability they will have. As long as we keep speaking like we do it now, within this framework of terrorism versus security, etc., we cannot, we cannot understand anything. We cannot win back our freedoms. We cannot bring sanity into these discussions. It's not terrorism versus freedom. It's not security without freedom. You, you heard in France a lot. In the mid 90s, it was the rhetorics of the hard right. And now the pseudo left in power uses it abundantly. This rhetoric that, oh, security is the first of all freedoms. First of all, it's untrue. It's untrue because in the French constitution, and I don't know about the others, there is not a, a, a notion of security, but a notion of uh, safety that is defined as safety against the arbitrary of the state. So safety against the, the unjustified use of power by the state, not safety against a plane falling on your head or a bomb detonating near you. But this rhetoric that makes security the first of all freedoms is actually there to make us used to the fact that we will have to sacrifice our freedoms. It is not about do we prefer security or do we prefer terrorism? It is how do we, without any compromise, defend our freedoms, all our freedoms as a package? And how do we ensure that those in power, those elected, those who have in their hands a duty to protect our freedoms, do it in an efficient and accountable way? The question is how, without any compromise, we uphold what is the, the basis of a free society or else we'll continue to drift towards authoritarianism. And the same happens with, with computers. Those companies will say, oh, we have a 100% secure antivirus for your whatnot. And, and some people just do believe, oh, wow, they say it's 100% secure. I'll click on it and install it. Maybe it's malware. Maybe it doesn't protect you from anything. Maybe you will pay 20 euros a month or, or, or whatnot. Maybe it will bring more security holes than it will fix. And those people sell you security. It's like, I think security is the new snake oil of this century. Can technology and all the things that we discussed today, all the things that we talk about so negatively, online use, all these things that people use constantly, can we use them to, to disentangle the, the framing of arguments? In the end it is about reclaiming our, our humanities 
which means understanding ourselves may be better, but understanding others yeah. better. So it is about breaking the silos, breaking the walls. You're not just a privileged white male born in the UK. You're also maybe a European citizen. You're, you're born on this planet. You're breathing the air and drinking the water that other people have breathed and, and drunk uh, before you. It's about broadening everyone's mind to try and accept more, try and understand more. It is about asking questions. It is about being curious. It is about accepting others. Ultimately, to be able to accept ourselves and overcome our fears and be able to think uh, with something else than just our fears. It brings us also to what we do with the internet. Remember 10 years ago, we thought the internet would, would save the world. We thought we would just relax and click here. And we won against oppression, against barbarity, that we would solve each and every problem of this world. Now we know that the internet has been turned into a machine for oppression. We know that everything we do, everything we like, everything we love, everything we buy, every breath you take, every move you make, they are watching us. What we want to do with these machines, what we want to do with the internet, which is use it as a way to, to connect humans to other humans, to, to learn about our humanities and learn about other people's humanities by shining more lights on, on things and sharing more knowledge rather than accepting that information be just delivered to us. This broken promise of the internet that we have to keep in our hearts because we have to rebuild everything from scratch. Let's face it, it is about enabling this free flow of information within our control, which means at all cost, free software running on hardware we can understand and control with decentralized services so we collectively own the infrastructure for communication and end-to-end -end encryption where we hold the keys to our own way of preserving the confidentiality of our communication and our data. Nine Eleven was a gift to NSA because now we'll get all the money we can we could ever hope for. They're responsible for. It. I mean, because they knew the people before the attacks and they didn't stop them.